All right. Uh, yeah, thank you, Ilio, uh, for the introduction. And also, hello and welcome from my side to today's web demo. Today, uh, the web demo will be about bearing and shaft calculation. And as Ilio already has uh, mentioned, the focus will be on bearing inner geometry with a very special focus now on this new feature, this uh, integration of the new SKF bearing stiffness interface that we have uh, in our latest release. So um, on, in, the, in the web demo, I will uh, give a brief overview on the calculation methods that we uh, consider as relevant with regard to rolling bearings in Keysoft. And here specifically, the focus will be on the ISO TS16281, where we uh, have the most advanced model. And we also consider this as the most advanced uh, standardized model uh, calculation approach for, uh, for Keysoft and other bearing calculations. And then we also see that now, since our rate latest release, we also have improved this even more by connecting Keysoft now to the uh, so-called SKF cloud service. So if we talk about bearing calculations, um, I think the, if we talk about objectives of those calculations, I think we could summarize that there is uh, maybe three fundamental objectives. Um, and one of, of this will be the static safety, which uh, uh, tells us whether our bearing is going to withstand some certain load with regard to constant deform uh, deformation. And then we also have, of course, the second important topic is always rating life if we, uh, if we want to uh, assess bearings. And then the third one, which is uh, specifically relevant also to Kisoft users, is the bearing reaction. So uh, whether we, you would like to know how our bearing is going to operate in a specific setup, in an arrangement with other bearings, with shafts. And this is really, I think, uh, especially important to Kisoft users because Kisoft users typically are um, um, calculate shafts and bearings within a gearbox context. So we have multiple shafts, we have multiple bearings, we have gears on those shaft arrangements. And then if we uh, consider gears, typically one task is also that the engineer is going to design and size modifications for, for the teeth. And for in order to this, do this properly, we or, or the, the engineer really needs to know very well how the system is behaving, how it is deforming, what's the overall stiffness. And this is only uh, possible if, if um, some very um, fundamental modeling of the uh, bearings is performed. So for those three uh, main objectives, we um, in Kisoft have also some standardized uh, methods implemented. And this is the three methods I have mentioned. On one hand, we have this ISO 76, which deals, um, which uh, takes into account the static rating. So uh, all about safety factors there, static safety factor. Then we have the ISO 281, which is mostly relevant for uh, rating life calculation, dynamic uh, load rating. And then there is this ISO TS 16, one, which is um, a computational oriented standard. So it's made for, for the use in software while you can use those two standards basically also manually with, within a, on a paper, sheet of paper. This standard here is much more advanced and uh, yeah, some software in order to be implemented. Besides the standardized methods, there is also of course some non-standardized methods. For example, in most of the catalogs, there's also extensions to those uh, calculations here or some special cases with uh, additional manufacturer specific factors and cases. These are typically yet yeah, documented in catalogs or in some specifications from the manufacturers. Much more interesting to the user of case of food is actually what is not public. So if we, we, we have uh, knowledge or not, we have knowledge, but the manufacturer of bearings, they of course have a lot more uh, knowledge of the details of the inner geometry, of how it's best modeled with regard to uh, calculations. And 
in this web demo, we will see later that with the new SCAF interface, there is a, also a way how we can access essentially this part here without having the manufacturer to disclose that sensitive information directly. First, I will start now with the standardized methods that are integrated in case of and show you a bit the advantages and disadvantages of uh, the different approaches. So if we have the static load rating described in the ISO 76, this is one of the, uh, I think the, some of the first very basic standards that we need to consider because it describes uh, um, the static safety of our bearings. Well, this is the, for most of the applications, it's not the limiting case. It, there, is, there is also a, some, some applications where essentially this is a limiting case. So it's always important to take this into account or to check that we have enough safety margin there. The essence of that standard can actually be summarized in one simple equation here. So we have a static safety factor that we calculate and we calculate it uh, based on the static uh, load rating of a bearing. So this is always listed in bearing catalogs and we compare it against some static equivalent rating. So if we increase the rating number, we can also increase the safety factor or if we reduce the equivalent static loading, then we can also increase, uh, increase the safety factor. The equivalent load is calculated uh, with uh, taking into account the radial force on that specific bearing as well as the axial force. And it's done with those two uh, factors here with the X and the Y factor. Those two factors, they are also tabulated in the standard as well as in the catalogs. And if you run a case of the calculation, those factors are also uh, directly integrated in case of, so you will never have to enter those factors manually. They are automatically uh, read from the database. Then what is also important, of course, is the ISO 281, which uh, describes on one hand the uh, dynamic load rating and more specifically, which gives us an indication on the rating life that some certain bearing has. It's similar in the way that it's uh, calculated. Also here, we have a dynamic rating number in this case that is also listed in bearing catalogs and we compare it now against some dynamic equivalent load. Then we have an exponent small p here. This is uh, at the order of three. Depends whether it's a, a roller bearing or whether it's a ball bearing. And with that uh, very simple equation, we can then calculate a number of million revolutions that our bearing population at this loading would be able to um, to uh, succeed with with a failure probability of ten percent. So, if we have, in, as a result, for example, five million uh, revolutions, then we will most likely have ten percent of that bearings fail within that five million of revolutions. The approach is also similar with regard to the calculation of the dynamic equivalent load. So also here we have a radial force that we take into account and also we take into account the axial force depends a bit on the type of bearing of course and with a x and a y factor we calculate that dynamic equivalent load now this is essentially called the basic rating life so it means it's always referring to some standard conditions and as we all know that uh, applications, real life applications typically, typically are not uh, reference applications. So this standard also describes how we can derive the so-called modified rating life from that value here. And the approach is also, uh, or the essence of the approach is, is also quite simple. We have essentially two factors that we multiply on the basic rating life. So the first factor, the A1 factor simply uh, is describes the 
failure probability. So as I have mentioned, the basic rating life refers to a failure probability of 10%. Now for some applications, this might be sufficient, but there might also be uh, applications where this is, where we need 1% or maybe even 0.1%. So uh, this can be taken into account in this factor here. Yeah, which will, in this case, if you have a lower probability, then of course your rating life will be reduced here. Then the second factor um, takes into account the conditions that the bearing uh, is running it at. So this means uh, lub, uh, lubrication, but, but also uh, the cleaning, cleanness of the environment and also some fatigue limits that are given to that bearing. So behind that factor, there is a bit more calculation required than just in the A1 factor, but also, this is directly integrated in Kisoft, and the only thing you will have to enter is essentially the lubricant and uh, the environment conditions. So to summarize those two basic standards for the static and dynamic assessment, I think we can say that they are always take as a major input our axial force and our radial force on that specific bearing and uh, they are, uh, can then uh, calculate and give an idea on the static safety as well as on the rating life here. Of course, we will also need some catalog data in order to run the calculation, including those factors that I have mentioned, lubrication and so on. This also describes a bit the limitations of, of that standard. We see now the input essentially is already a bearing force, so we already need to have that bearing force available, which means in, in, in the case of a shaft calculation that we need to somehow model that reaction force. And we will later see that the best um, approach within KISOF is to use this ISO TS16281 for that purpose. So before we continue here, I think we will switch over to KISOF and see uh, a bit those settings directly. All right, you should now see uh, Kisoft as it looks like if you start it up the first time. Um, I have prepared some example file here. So what you can see now is the shaft editor of Kisoft. Now, if you want to calculate the bearing, typically you do this in the context of the shaft editor and a shaft calculation. Uh, there is also, as you can see here in the modules, there's also uh, two other separate modules here where you could have a pure separate rolling bearing calculation. Um, however, those modules typically are not used very often because everything is directly integrated in the shaft calculation and can be assessed more easily here. So in order to calculate a bearing, you will not have to do uh, a lot of things. So the first thing you will have to do is you will have to add those bearings to your model. In this case, our simple model here consists of, a, of some, some shaft here. It has two tapered roller bearings, one on the right-hand side and one on the left-hand side here. Then we have a power flow through a coupling here. So probably we could have a, an electrical motor here or some additional shaft here. And the power flow goes through that shaft and it will leave the shaft at here through that gear. But this is really a very simple model just to demonstrate a bit how this works. Now, if I have added a bearing here, I have to parameterize uh, some basic settings. So if I click on that bearing here on the right hand side, I can see my uh, properties of that bearing. So um, now I have to remove that webinar control a bit. Yeah. All right, um, so the first thing that we will have to define always is how is our bearing fixed? So is it just a non-locating bearing? Is it fixed at the right-hand side, like in this case? Is it some, some fixed bearing which can take forces from all, so from both direction, or is it maybe just a thrust bearing? Then you have to specify what kind of bearing you would like to use in your model. In this case, it's just a tapered roller bearing. And then, of course, you will have to select uh, 
a specific bearing type designation that you intend to use here. As this uh, web demo is a bit is, is about the integration also of the SCAF interface, we will use here as CAF bearings. This is no other uh, preference. So in this specific case, I have now um, a limitation I have mentioned. So I need to model somehow the bearing forces. Um, if I do not have a more, if, if I do not have a, some advanced model activated here, the basic uh, assumption of KISS of for bearings is always that they are fully rigid. So there will be no stiffness at those two bearings. You can improve this uh, if you go here to that tab here of the bearing stiffness and you could ac activate here that flag and the stiffness. If you would do so, you could also enter here some constant stiffness value for radial uh, deflection, axial deflection and also for tilting. So this is yeah, a possibility to improve a bit that simplified modeling. You could also select here if that was probably available some uh, CSV file or similar that contains some lookup table for uh, stiffness also in the three directions here. So I can now just run that calculation here. So I click here and as with all KISSOFT calculations, the most important results of that uh, calculation are always shown in the result window down here. Let me just take this out a bit. As you can see here now, uh, with regard to bearing here, we have on one hand, we have the bearing reaction forces down here, including the uh, resulting forces in the X set plane and also up here we have the results as mentioned uh, before so the static safety here calculated based on the ISO 76 standard and also uh, on the right hand side here we have this basic rating life so we will later see the the models here so i have if I go now to basic data, um, I just close those two here so we can easily see it. There is this area here, which, uh, or this group of options here for rolling bearings. And here you will find the most important, essentially settings for uh, roller, rolling bearing calculations. So the first important field here is the, how you consider the uh, rolling bearings here. The first option is, as I have mentioned, so you do not consider bearing stiffness in an advanced way. You either consider bearings as rigid or you have to enter um, some stiffness value that you derive from some other program or that you probably get from some third party uh, supplier. We do not recommend to use the first option here. Uh, we recommend that you use one of the two other options here where you essentially, as we will see later in the, sl in the slides also, have a, um, a detailed assessment of the inner geometry of the internal geometry for bearing, which gives you the stiffness here, or even uh, the, the more uh, advanced, the most advanced approach where you do everything with that standard here, the ISO TS 16281. If you would like to assess also modified rating life, you can, activate it right next to that uh, drop down field here you can click on modify the rating life and then you will have to select your lubricant here and also your uh, lubricant temperature if you would like to and then the contamination here so you can either input some uh, manual uh, your your value or you can select here some predefined set from based on the oil filtration. Now I will just select this first very clean oil filtration. And now I run the calculation. Now I have again my uh, results window here. And now you can see there is a, another column now, which is the modified uh, rating life. 
and we have now selected very clean conditions and uh, a reasonable lubricant and in this case uh, you can also see that this would increase for uh, the rating life in this case by a factor of 10 so there's quite some difference between reference here and real life also the second bearing is almost 10 uh, is expected to last almost 10 times longer than if we just consider reference conditions now if we uh, would select the at the other um, end of the road so we have uh, oil lubrication down here without filtration by the way if you have some uh, field here and you cannot see the text there's always down here on the left hand side of the status uh, bar here you can always say see the full text of that specific option so I will select here no filtration and quite some contamination now if I run the calculation again and take the results we can now see there's also a factor of 10 but just in the other direction so now we have real life would be about 10 times less uh, rating life than reference here or in other words it's 100 times less than perfect conditions so this means it's it's quite important that you carefully select those settings because you will have a, a lot of leverage there if you would like to assess your uh, yeah real life or close to real life rating life results all right so let's go back to our slides then so as i have mentioned before uh, those two standards they are uh, a fundamental they are very fundamental and they are important however they um just give us some idea about static safety and uh, rating life and therefore we highly recommend to use not only those two standards but to use this ISO TS 16281 specification because as you can see here on the right hand side this standard will allow you to assess all three objectives so you can have uh, you, you can you will gain information on the static safety you can assess the rating life and you can also calculate the bearing reaction so uh, how do we do this or how do we um, yeah get to that objective and you can see the basic idea here in this, uh, this graphic here on the left hand side the idea of, sta of that standard is to really um, analyze the load on each rolling element in a bearing so we take into account um, or we, we, we um, calculate how much our bearing uh, rolling elements would be loaded if we have some certain deviation uh, of the inner ring against the outer ring so this is typically the convention in that standard so we might have a rotation of the inner ring we might also have a translation into any of the three uh, dimensions and as a result we will have some load or no load maybe um, on, on some of those rolling elements and the sum of all those individual loads will then give us on one hand the reaction forces but also uh, moments tilting moment can be calculated like this this and of course also the, some uh, very fundamental result is then also this uh, the stiffness here you can see just some illustration of the stiffness by the radial and axial stiffness here of course in the uh, three-dimensional um, space this is not just a two-dimensional uh, stiffness so it's really a three-dimensional stiffness the second important result that we gain from that calculation is the rating life also here we have a, a more advanced approach so we can really assess the rating life more detailed and we can also take into account let's say non-standard conditions on the bearing because the, the standard ISO 281 calculation is typically just um, designed to have uh, the, the standard of the most common load cases on a bearing and as soon as you you uh, deviate from that standard then uh, it's it might be absolutely not sufficient anymore <laughs> 
So um, referring to the picture that I had shown before, the input of that calculation is not force, uh, not axial force or radial force. Essentially here, the input into the calculation is the trans is a translational and the rotation vector of the inner ring versus the outer ring. Uh, for the rotation, we, we don't need to consider, of course, the rotating degree because uh, this is not supported by the bearing. We just have uh, two tilting angles in this case. Now I have uh, shown this in case of, we have three options. The first one is not recommended because it's just very much limited. It might fit only to some standard cases, but not to, as it's not, cannot be used as a generic model. If you select the first option here, uh, sorry, the second option, then the stiffness is calculated according to the ISO TS16281, but the rating life is still calculated to the ISO 281. So this means we use here uh, the input to calculate the reaction forces. Those reaction forces are then used uh, to uh, also for the ISO 281 calculation to calculate rating life and also static safety. The best option is, um, or the most advanced option is the third one here, where you calculate everything uh, here, so uh, static safety, rating life, and bearing reaction with that ISO TS16281 standard. So you will also have those results here from that calculation standard. Now, the problem, or let's say the, the challenge here, is that in order to calculate bearing reaction force, we need to know here this translational components and rotational components. And in order to, to um, calculate these ones here, we need to know the reaction forces that act on our bearing. So therefore, this is not just a straightforward calculation. Essentially, we need to iterate here. And this is where our kiss of the shaft solver comes into play. Uh, so the basic idea is that we have here some, some loop. So we have uh, four reaction forces that are then applied through the shaft uh, solver on the shaft. This will result in a bending line and our bending line will then result in some um, deformation of the center point of the bearings. This deformation can then be used through that calculation again to calculate the uh, reaction forces and so on. In order to make this a bit faster than, uh, than with just taking into account those reaction forces, we do also um, calculate the stiffness matrix at the operating point here and use this one to uh, in the shaft solver then to have a, a fast convergence here. So convergence essentially means, and this is also important to kiss off, uh, convergence means that if you run that loop and between two steps, the forces and also the displacements here will not change anymore. Then you have convergence and we can use that as our solution. Now, we can of course also use those reaction forces here in, um, in order to still calculate those values according to these two standards here. And this is also a case of it uh, does. So you will also have the results of those values here. So that's the basic approach. Now the question is, uh, yeah, what's the difficulty with that standard? And essentially, the difficulty is right here. Um, in order to properly apply that standard, we need to know the inner uh, bearings internal geometry. So we need to know how many rolling elements we have in a bearing, how, what's the di diameter of those rolling elements, the length, and so on. And typically, typically that data is not really available. So bearing manufacturers usually don't just give out some bulk data of uh, internal geometry. Maybe they will uh, provide it on an individual, individual base, but usually this is just not generally available. There is some exceptions. So in KISSOFT, we have integrated the most important bearing uh, internal geometry data of SKF bearings since release 
I think 2020. So for example, there we have number of rolling elements or diameter of rolling elements. Pretty much never you will have microgeometry. So the profile of rolling elements or profile of raceway, this is usually something that you will not get from any of the manufacturers also uh, not on an individual base as this is yeah, considered some uh, some intellectual property of those manufacturers. So how can we still do the calculation in Kisoft? And for this, um, it's important we will essentially use again those two standards here. So the ISO 76 and the ISO 281 standard, because those two standards, they also include some um, equations uh, where we can calculate the rating number here based on the internal geometry. So in this case, the um, static light, uh, rating number. The same is for the dynamic rating number here. Also here we have an equation. I think this is for uh, rolling elements. There's so it looks somewhat different for um, for ball bearings. So this is for roller bearings. And here we also have an equation that describes how you can calculate the rating number. So in case of we would like the other way round. So we usually have the rating numbers as this is the most fundamental value that is listed in catalogs. And we would like to derive the internal geometry based on that rating numbers. The challenge here is just that we have at least two, three unknowns. So we have number of rolling elements, pitch diameter and roller diameter at least. For roller bearings, we also have um, roller length but we only have two equations here. So how do we do it still in Kisoft? Well, there is one advantage in this equation here. We have the number of rolling elements and that's a discrete number. So this gives us at least some way that we can iterate on number of rolling elements and generate some, uh, yeah, some, some solutions that would fit to those two equations. And this is exactly what we do in case of we basically generate some reasonable solutions and then we filter them. On one hand, we filter them based on hard constraints. So this is really hard limits. Uh, for example, a rolling element cannot be wider than the bearing itself or there cannot be a, a rolling um, element diameter which is larger than the bearing ring thickness, things like that. Or also, there's only it's only possible to have a, some certain number of rolling elements in one ring, of course. So these are quite straightforward. We simply uh, com compare against the threshold, and if that's not fulfilled, we just remove it from the set of solutions. Then we also add here as a, an extension some soft constraints, as you can see here, and this includes some typical ratios and features. Uh, like maybe a ratio of diameter against uh, ra uh, thick thickness of ring or so. And this will then basically rate the solutions. And in the end, we will select the solution with, which has the highest rating. And like that, like this, we are still able to have a reasonable solution of inner geometry. And that approach has actually proved to be yeah, very reasonable. It will not always give the perfect solution but it will, in most of the cases, give a very good and reasonable solution. Now, we will just have a look at this in Kisoft. So here we have still our model uh, from, from before. So those two tapered roller bearings now. Before I will um, enable here now the new models, I will first run a calculation because I would like to see now my also the bending line here. So in the menu graphics here and in the object shaft deformation, this is probably the most often used uh, shaft graphic here as it's the bending line. And we can show this here. So here you can see the bending line of that shaft system here. 
without any advanced modeling. So here you can see the uh, because we are uh, fully rigid supports, our bending line always goes through the center points of that bearings here. I will maybe now just uh, highlight a bit the color. So let me call this classic and I will just give it some other color here. All right, so we will now store that curve here in order to compare it against the bending line with the more advanced solution. So I will now go here and I will select the third option here, which gives me both stiffness and also uh, rating life based on that advanced calculation standard. For simplicity, I will disable here the modified rating life as this, uh, yeah, we don't really need it for this example. Now let's run the calculation. All right, so I will now have here. And as you can see here, um, this one is the bending line from before. So with the simplified modeling here and the black line here, maybe I'll just give it some other color here, maybe blue. So the method here describes the bending line with taking into account also internal bearing geometry and therefore having some stiff bearings which have a specific stiffness. And as you can see here, the bending line is quite different. So if we just consider the simplified model here, we would just expect some offset here, some radial offset, but no, yeah, not really a tilting. Whereas in real life, this shaft will quite some some amount here and you could actually imagine that if you would now design some uh, tooth trace uh, some tooth modifications based on just the simplified model and that this is probably not the best modifications if uh, a real life application is more like this here this is yeah just some example where you can really see that depending on your application there's really quite some differences here between those two models. Now we can also see the results here in the uh, results window. Now we have uh, also again two columns now, so no more modified rating life because I've disabled this one. But now we have here this LNRH, which is the uh, reference rating life based on the ISO TS 16281. And also here we can see that uh, in the first case, the more realistic rating life is about 2.5 times, almost 2.5 times larger here than you would just expect from the simplified standard here. And it's even more in the second case where we have a factor of always almost five between the a more realistic rating life here and just the simplified values. So it, it clearly shows that it's important here modeling and if you if you want to have some realistic expectation on rating life that uh, it's always a good idea to really select this uh, advanced approach here and not just keep um, those simplified um, standards. Now if we activate these models here, there's also a couple of more advantages uh, as we will see because only this third option here will allow us to take into account tolerance, to take into account internal clearance change uh, and also take into account thermal expansion for example. In order to have a look at this, I will now select some bearing here. So let me select this on the right hand side. I will close this window here to have a better view now. So here our um, our function to ac activate the stiffness input is, has disappeared of course because we are now calculating stiffness so we cannot uh, enter it anymore. And on the other hand, we, if we switch here to bearing clearance, there's a, a couple of more options now. Uh, it's now possible to also enter tolerance. So for example, I can now specify that this 
uh, specific bearing has a, a PN tolerance. And when I enable this one, I can also specify the allowance or tolerance of my of my uh, integration of the bearing in the housing and on the shaft. So I could enter directly an allowance here, or I could also specify, specify here some tolerance. Let's just take K6, same for here. So I will here use capital K uh, tolerance. And this will then be taken into account in the calculation. In addition, uh, also thermal expansion will be taken into account. Uh, we can see this down here, that option. There's two options. So you could enter temperature of the rolling bearing components, including ring, inner and outer ring, and rolling element manually here. Or you could just um, connect them or couple them to the surrounding shaft. So uh, if you select this one here, outer ring uh, will just be assumed to be to have temperature as the housing, inner ring to have temperature of the inner shaft, and then the rolling element will be, I think, the mean value between those two temperatures. All right, so we have finally configured now our tolerances, our allowances here. So we can now run the calculation. Now again, down here, we have the results window, as you can see, and yeah, the rating life has changed uh, a little bit, not uh, too much. It's still at the same order of magnitude. I think we will now have a look at the load distribution of that specific bearing. So for this, we can go here to graphics. And then we have here a section rolling bearings where you can find some some uh, graphics for, for several properties of the bearings. Um, one of the, I think the, of, the, of the graphics, which is uh, very helpful is the load distribution. It's more a, a qualitative graphic where you can really see how your bearing is loaded. You have it as uh, 2D or as 3D. I will just open 3D now. So here we can see the rolling elements and how they are loaded now. And we can also see that it seems like we do have some uneven load of, on this uh, tapered roller bearing. So it's more like the load is on one side of this bearing here. I think it's also even more easy to see this in the 2D view. So we switch to this one. And here it's also a similar view where we have each rolling element here and then also the magnitude here of that load on those uh, rolling elements. And it's very clear here, we have uh, not a very even load. So what can we do in this case? Typically what we would do for tapered roll bearings is that you would apply some uh, pretension. This is also something that we can do with Kisoft. So let's just try this one. So I will now uh, move my picture down here Maybe we make it a little smaller. Now we can select the corresponding bearing here that I would like to apply an offset or a pretension on. So it's this one here. And it's also here in this uh, tab, bearing clearance. Just scroll a little bit down here. And here we'll find the section which is called the offset. Now the offset is something which can be applied in this case to the external ring and you can apply it in a means of, uh, of x, y, z direction, but also on tilting. So this is a general offset. This is especially useful in combination with kisses, where you would, in this case, apply maybe some casing deformation onto that ring. If we just want to apply a pretension on bearing, we will just use this offset x, um, on the y direction. So I will now change here to microns, so it's probably a bit easier. and. I would just start with the negative offset since we are now putting uh, the ring towards the negative y direction of that bearing. So I'll start maybe with 25 microns. Now you might have a look at the rating life here, how this changes and also on this um, load distribution on the bearing. So let's run the calculation. Yeah. All right, we can already see that the rating life has increased by about 10,000 hours, so quite a bit. 
Now let's increase it some more, maybe increase to 50. Rerun calculation. Now we have increased even more. So since we are now increasing the pretension on the right hand bearing, we will also of course increase the load on the left hand, the bearing from the left side. And in this case, it's not the positive effect. So here we will have some reduction in rating life. So um, yeah, we will always have to optimize, of course, pretension in the context of the whole system. Now in this specific case, I just would like to show it for this uh, single bearing here. So I could increase even more, maybe to 75. Let's just run again. And you can see now we have a, a significant drop now here. So we have dropped back to uh, below 50,000 uh, hours. And the second one also suffers now from that obviously too high pretension. So I will just go back to this 50 and keep that one for, uh, yeah, for a reasonable value. All right. So this is just a way how you could, for example, apply pretension. You can also, uh, of course, do this for other bearings here, not only for tapered roll bearings. If you are now interested in having a look at the, um, the results of those calculations, you can simply click on one hand on the general report here. So let's just open this one. And here, if I scroll or if I click here to the um, table of contents. There's always a section here for bearing results. So if I was going to click here, I would find all the results from that calculation in my report. There's also another report which contains even more bearing results. It's the rolling bearing report. So we click on report and then uh, rolling bearing. And now we can see also a report which contains just rolling bearing results. What might be of special interest here in that example would be the so-called operating bearing clearance calculation. Let's just have a quick look at this. You can see here, uh, if you remember, we specified for the right hand bearing some tolerance. So we selected a PN tolerance bearing and we also applied some tolerance on the shaft hop uh, the shaft and hop connection here. So with K6, capital K6. And yeah, this is then the input. And in that report, for example, you will find now the operating bearing clearance calculation that shows each step. It would also include if you would have thermal expansion, and then you can find like this, the, um, yeah, the influence on the final bearing clearance change. So this was just a brief overview on the functionalities in case of, of some of the func functionalities in case of for the inner bearing geometry. I will now move back to my presentation. So we have seen that uh, in case of you have several um, calculation methods integrated, which are standardized. And I mentioned this already a couple of times. It's always, if you can, always the best idea to select this ISO TS16281 because it's the only method here which really allows you to uh, take into account all three um, objectives here. So it allows you to calculate static safety, rating life, and also a detailed bearing reaction. Now, if we um, leave now the standardized methods and continue to the ones which are, which are not standardized. I mentioned here one topic which is uh, typically um, common, uh, yeah, commonly used is those open um, calculation instructions typically from the manufacturers. So if you have catalogs from, from them, uh, there will be typically some specific cases, some additional factors or um, some limitations compared to the standards. In this web demo, I will not really go into the details for this one. So I would rather uh, like to focus now on the second topic here. It's that topic which is really interesting to or interesting to you as a Kisoft user. Um, yeah, if you have the possibility to access somehow the manufacturer internal know-how, this is of course the greatest value to you. And I will now show you how you can do this with the new SKF interface. <laughs> 
you remember this um, short, um, yeah, from this short overview on the general approach of a bearing calculation here. So we have here on the left hand side, we have that iteration loop with the ISO TS16281 calculation in between. And then we have this post processing path here that can be applied still where we have those two ISO 76 calculations and ISO 281 calculation. So in 2019 release, we already added here a new interface to the SKF cloud. It's still a post-processing kind of interviews uh, interface, which means we also in this case um, send the reaction forces to the SKF interface. And then based on that reaction forces and some additional data uh, like lubrication, for example, we will receive um, also additional results from SKF. So this includes some SKF specific uh, rating lives or friction results, um, frequency results and so on. This is already present in KISSOFT since uh, release 2019. Now for the, for the latest release 2021, we started over with this part here and we would actually, um, yeah, together with Eske, we developed an approach where we could just replace the whole part here with their interface here, inside here. You remember that the general interface to this calculation is that we input here some translational and rotational data, so the, how much the inner ring is uh, going to rotate and translate against the outer ring. And as an um, output here, we will have uh, on one hand the reaction forces and also some stiffness matrix data. Now, in order to have um, that interface integrated, the idea or the basic idea is that if we just keep the interface the same, so we don't change anything here, then we can just apply here a so-called drop-in replacement and this allows us that we can now access the SKF internal calculations here without having to know the details here. So you could imagine this like yeah, some kind of black box, uh, if you want to say so. So we just put in the same as we used to put in in our calculation and we will get some similar results here through that interface. And it's also, um, providing additional information. So like the other calculation, we can now also refer to the rating life, the reference li rating life here, including the modified reference rating life. So I think we will just move over again to KISOFT and see how this interface can be activated. All right, this is the model from before. And I will, before we start, I would first like to just show an appending line again, so we can later compare with the uh, SKF interface. So I will click here on graphics shaft and open my bending line, graphic view. So I will just also store, in this case, this is the calculation with our implementation of the ISO TS16281. So I will just store uh, this curve here and give it some different color maybe so it's easier to identify. All right, so we use this as a reference now and we would like to see later what we did, would be the difference if we were now going to replace our calculation with the one that is uh, running on SKF premises. So, the first thing that you will have to do if you want to run that SCAF interface, you will need a registration here. This can be done in uh, SCAF, in Extra's SCAF registration tool. Okay, uh, so I have now successfully registered here with the module. You will also find a separate video on the internet where you can also see in detail how you could activate that module. I'll just close one. Now, in order to activate the interface, I have to go here to uh, module specific settings. And I go to the section rolling bearings. And down here we have the group SKF. And you will find here two cloud interface options to activate. Now, the first one is 
the interface that I have mentioned that we already introduced in release 2019. We can also activate it here. And then the second one is that new interface where we really take into account the stiffness from SKF that is very much detailed and based on the real inner geometry. So I just confirm now. Now let's see, we run the calculation. Now it takes a bit longer. Uh, if you remember, we have that iteration loop and for each iteration, we will basically send a request to the SKF cloud application interface. That one will uh, calculate and uh, return the results and we will use that results for our next iteration step. That's quite fast, but still it's of course a bit uh, uh, not as fast as if you would just have everything on the, your local machine. So therefore um, we have also introduced an approach where we calculate some intermediate solution, which allows us to switch over to the SKF interface as soon as we have some reasonable intermediate solution. This further accelerates that process here. So what we can see on the right hand side now is that bending graphic I have mentioned and we can see now dark blue the curve from the previous calculation so from our implementation now let's just switch to um, another color maybe also use blue because the SKF color is of course blue and yeah it seems like our calculation now is quite close to the one that SKF provides so this most likely will depend a bit on the type of bearing so for for some bearings the implementation is probably quite clear and also um, uh, yeah reasonable from the open public uh, point of view but there might also be some bearings where there is some details that are absolutely not known or, or might be very specific to SKF bearings and there it could be that we have more difference here between the official standardized calculation and the one from SKF. There's of course also a rating life results and we double click here. So here we have this result window now and here you will also see on one hand the reaction forces here with the SKF cloud services here. So this is um, specifically descri described here with this title here described and here those forces here are now really from the SKF interface. The same goes for the rating life results up here. So here we have now this new column here, LNRH, which is the um, reference rating life. This one was now calculated on SKF server. And so it's really the one that they would expect um, from their detailed inner geometry. And it's not, I think it's, it's not too far away from what we had before. Some value before was about uh, 50,000. Now we have about I think with pretension it was 75 or something like that. So it's still at the same order of magnitude, but most likely this value here from SKF is more accurate in this case. On the left hand side, you will also see the basic rating life, which is from this classic post processing interface. This value is, of course, also available. Same goes for the static safety factor here. And also, if you compare it now with the ones from our calculation here, our implementation there is not a big difference here so yeah i think here um, the implementation is quite similar also here there might be some bearings where the publicly available information is not sufficient and there might be more details to be considered and in this case you might find some larger difference probably between the skf results and the one that are just from the standards All right, so the same goes here. If you want to know all the uh, results returned, you can see, uh, just go to the report here and open the rolling bearings report. And then if you scroll down to the table of contents, there's now also a specific section here with results from the SKF calculation service from the classic one that we already had in 19 release and also here from the new one that we have now since the latest GISOFT release. 
All right, so let's close this one. Now we are already uh, coming also to the end of that presentation. And yeah, I hope I could show in this uh, brief overview, uh, really an, an overview on the calculation methods that we have in case of, so what possibilities you have in order to model and also to calculate bearings. Specifically here, we would like to point out again that the best model you can select is always this ISO TS-16281 calculation, which gives you the most accurate results and is also possible to cover all relevant objectives, static safety, rating life and bearing reaction force. If you want to go even more accurate and you are using SKF bearings, in this case, of course, you can also activate the new cloud interface, which will even improve that accuracy and give you more uh, detailed results, taking into account really uh, information that is otherwise only available to SKF. This is also not the end of the calculation approach. So in case of, we are also in discussion with other manufacturers to integrate some similar kind of services. So uh, yeah, you can expect in future case of the release that this will become more and more the, the trend so that we do integrate calculations in terms of services rather than to integrate just some standards which are not updated on a very frequent base. So thank you very much for the attention and I will now give back to my colleague Ilya again. <laughs>